Hello, this is Danny from CG Dreams, and today we're going to be covering a cool subject which I haven't seen a lot being covered. In fact, a particular part of this subject I've never seen covered before. Only it's a very, very important thing for animators, for characters, that is, especially. And what this is, is a way to control morphs by the joint rotation, but also positional controlled morphs. And I will explain the difference between the two and why you would use one over the other in certain situations. So first of all, I'm just going to play this back. And this simple piece of geometry is to represent an arm. And what you'll see going on in this animation is two morphs been applied. We've got the bulge for the bicep and then we've got the tricep at the end. You see this bulge and then the tricep morph. Now, for some of you that are familiar with joint, joint control morphs, you may be thinking that is how I've achieved this, but you'll be wrong. It's actually positional controlled morphs in which I've actually done to achieve this. And what is positional controlled morphs? Well, it's exactly that. Instead of the rotation of a joint driving the strength of a morph, what we've got is we've got a position of a null which is driven by a joint to be within a fall off that is driving the strength of your morph. The reasons you would want to use this type of uh, morph, the positional type, is for areas such as the shoulder, which can be quite complex. As an example, the shoulder can move in different directions, forwards, backwards, up and down, and also it can roll around in a circular motion. So when you're trying to use rotational morphs, or shall I say rotational joint control morphs, you're going to come into an issue when it comes to shoulders. And that being is, is that you need to be able to blend between the morphs according to the position of your shoulder. For things like this, where the arm is simply just bending on one axis, one or the other, well, rotational control morphs are absolutely fine. Um, and I'm going to show you both. But the morphs that you're seeing right now is actually driven by directional, or shall I say positional, morphs. I hope that wasn't too confusing on the introduction. So first of all, we're going to set us up something from scratch. We're just going to go to the cylinder. We're just going to change the axis in which the cylinder is on. I'm going to change this to the plus X. And that's just display our lines. We're just going to create something very simple here. So I'm going to bring down the rotational segments. Up the height segment. So we've got roughly kind of square polygons. And that's just stretch this out a little bit more. Which means we have some add some more segments. It just gives us something to work with to get a reasonable deformation. That will do absolutely fine. Um, the caps for this demonstration, I'm going to take off, and then I'm just going to apply that. So the C key will make it editable. I'm now going to just go to a view in which I can see the entire surface, which is the front in this particular case. So. Let's go to the character tool, select the joint, and with the control key, I'm just going to create two joints. It's going to create a third joint because we've got these end null. You can see we've got these or positions here, the, the front, the middle, and the end null. This is kind of essentially what you're going to get. I press the space bar, and that drops that tool. I'm going to just drag the root outside of the geometry for the minute. I'm going to call this geometry arm and then this joint's going to be bicep forearm and this one's going to be the end joint Normally I've done proper with this, but you need to, in this particular case, for what I'm going to show you. Okay, so the first thing is, we've got our arm. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the arm, 
select these three joints and then we're just going to go to character command and bind this makes it so that the arm mesh can now be an animated by the joint and what i'm going to do so i'm just going to rename this root as jcm so this is going to be standing for joint controlled morphs okay and then that's just Like both of these and then hold down the control key drag and drop we've got a copy i'll show you why in a minute but this one's going to be positional controlled morphs okay so we've got two examples here first of all let's go and work with the joint control morphs i am just going to whack this into its own null Select both of these, Control and G. This is this is purely just to keep it tidy. Alt and G, sorry, Alt and G. So this is our JCM. Just keeps the scene clean. Okay, so that's a basic thing set up for us. It's just I've done this in in this video, just include this so that you can cut, go along with the exercise. So first of all, let's work with the joint controlled morphs. So that's just expand our joints here, and for this, a joint controlled morph is typically just set in a rotation on a joint, and in this particular case, it'll be our forearm. So I'm just going to set a keyframe and around about I don't know say 40 frames in I'm just gonna rotate that up and then set a keyframe then go to the end around about 80 and we're just gonna rotate that back down again okay done now we've just got this simple movement of the arm flexing and extending okay what we want to do now is we want to be able to create a bulge here and then then we're going to go to get the joint to control that bulge by its rotational movement so it's quite easy to do first of all we need to create a morph for this so that's just select the arm right click go to the character tags and select pose morph in the pose morph tag the kind of morph that we're going to be doing is points in this particular case i'm going to call this bicep we want to make sure that it's a correctional area and that it's post deformers so in other words it means that the priority is that the bone joint is going to be rotating first and then the morphs going to be applied secondary which means that we can then go ahead and apply this or shall I say some apply some deformation to this so to apply the deformation to this what i'm going to do is i'm going to loop select for the bicep is so ul just click there and there that'll do and then i'm just going to Things simple. I'm going to slip my scale tool, enable soft selection. Then I'm just going to scale it up. And then tell you what, that's also just move that up a little bit. And I think that will do. We've got a bit of a bulge there. Let's make it even more noticeable. affecting the forearm a little bit there so just gonna be careful with that radius okay I think just for our demonstration purposes we will leave it like that as long as we can see a bulge in there and then I'm just gonna to go to my pose here 
then when we slide it we're going to be getting this action here we have to just go into animation mode here for this to work and we come out of our component mode back to the object space or the model space there and now our slider is now going to be bulging it the next thing is is we want to get the rotation of the arm to control the bicep to do this we use what's called drivers and we need to set the rotation of the arm as the driver in this particular case is rotation of the forearm now before we do this let's just select the forearm we look at our coordinates and you can see here if i just go backwards and forwards you can see here what's changing here is the pitch okay so when we get to this keyframe 40 just take note of this pitch in fact i'm going to copy it this is the maximum rotational point which the arm's going to get to when i want that strength of that bicep to be at its full now that i've got this what i need to do is i need to make sure that we're driving the morph so what we do is right on the pitch here the p we right click we go to expressions and we click on set driver okay so now that we've set the driver we need to set what's to be driven so in this particular case we go to a morph and we want the strength to be driven so we just right click expressions driven absolute i believe it's absolute um, anyway so you'll notice here that it's driving it, but it's not driving it as accurately as we want it to be. This is because there's a couple of things we need to set up. And it's found in the Espresso tab that's already been created for us, this tag here. Let's double click on this. What we have made for us is the source, the rotation on pitch, which is going to be driving the strength of the morph. And it's done through what's called a range mapper. Okay, so we've got the degree of one affecting the percentage of another. Now, it's a good idea to clamp. What clamping does is if you was to rotate the joint beyond this posi position, it will not continue to push the morph beyond its limit and force it to bulge more than I actually set it to do. So it'd be equivalent of, say, setting the morph to 150 or 160 percent which you don't want to ever go there so that's what we would want to use the clamp for the parameter this is the important part what we've got here is we've got the lower and the upper and this is where we can set the differences between at what point of rotation it's going to be affecting it and here you can see the degrees now if i was to change this to the paste or copy degrees that i had you'll see now that it's at 100 degrees in which this morph is going to be applied fully okay so in essence what it's telling us here is anything to do with this input upper and lower up here is to do specifically with the joint anything to do with the upper and lower here is specifically to do with the morph strength okay and you can tell it's the difference between we're working between percentages of strength and the radio of the radius, basically. So at the minimum point, we want zero. OK, so zero means the, the basic, the, the, the zero position of the joint in its totally relaxed pose. And the upper limit is 100 percent. So what we're telling or what we're saying is for the range mapper is when the joint is rotated on the pitch at 100.527 degrees i want you to apply 100 percent of the morph that's it it's done now when i play this back now you'll see the morph disappear and then you'll see it reappear according to the joint rotation as you can see so that's just play this back In this second part, we're going to be creating a positional control morph. And to do this, I've got exactly the same setup as before. I've got this animation going along and I've got a morph attached to this. 
which has given us a bicep bulge. And there it is, you can see that. I'm going to turn the bicep bulge to zero, just so that we don't see it for the minute. And we're going to have two types of animation on this, this particular time. And this is reason, the reason for this is because I want to make sure that you can see that we need our fall off to be following the route in which going to be, it is, is to be animated. You need to choose what that route's going to be. So the route can either be the root null in which the joints are in, which is normally the case, or it can be the bicep in, as an example here. I'm going to choose the bicep just because of the naming. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in there and set a keyframe. And then I'm going to move forward to say, I don't know, keep frame 30. I just want to move it ever so slightly to a different position like this. This is just so I can show you that the fall off is following the arm. And it'd be quite apparent why this is actually important. So the bicep is going to be essentially our root. And this end null that I've created here is the null in which I want to be within a fall off that is triggering off the strength of the morph. So I'm going to call this, say, I don't know, um, enter field or something. Or enter, yeah, just enter. Do. OK, so let's go to the top null here. Right click, Cinema 4D Tags, and go to Expresso. In the Expresso, I'm going to drag the bicep. This is essentially the route in which I've been animating. And I'm going to select the end null. And let's just expand these. It can be quite tricky sometimes to expand them. OK, so for those of you who are not familiar with Expresso, or shall I say these particular nulls here, these nodes, the blue is the input and the pink is the output. So when you click on these, you're going to get the, uh, the, um, the parameters that you're likely expecting to see, which relates to an input or an output. In this particular case, for the bicep, when I click on here, we want to select a global matrix for the end null that's going to be entering our fall off in a minute we're going to be having its relative position in this particular case is coordinates global position global position okay that's all we need to do for this next thing is is if you go to the search part here and start to type fall off l f l l l will normally bring this up drag and drop this in here we're going to connect the global matrix to the fall off matrix. And then we're going to click the global position to the sample position. For the value, we're going to be driving our morph. So I'm going to drag and drop our morph in here. And then because we've got our morph set up for as a bicep bulge, we can just select the parameters of the strength and the input. So tag properties, bicep strength. And let's just connect this up. So we've got the bicep, which is the root null, okay, which means that basically wherever this root is going to be rotating or positioning to, the fall off is always going to be following it, okay, which is what we exactly want. We want this to follow it. Very, very important that it does this. This null, which I've just called enter, is attached to the end joint as a child of the end joint, so that when the end joint or the forearm eventually moves this particular null into a, a fall off field at its 100% value, it's going to drive the pose morph. It's as simple as that. The next thing is, is we need to position our fall off and set the fall off. So I don't know why I closed that for. But let's just open that back up. We click on the fall off and our parameters are going to be showed to the right. We need to change the shape from infinite to something like more practical, like something like a sphere. Now, 
this sphere needs to be placed exactly where the position of our null is going to be, where it needs to be applied to full strength. So let's just go through our animation, and you'll be able to see at frame 40 was where we had our maximum bicep bulge to be occurring. So with our full lot selected, what we want to do is we want to just use these offsets to position. So we don't want to move to that position, that's fine. It's this position we want to move in this particular case anyway. So let's move this up and our end null, just to show you where it is, it's right here. We need to move this fall off so that it's with exactly within that position. So let's just move this and you'll see as it enters, our bicep is bulging. Now what you can do is you can adjust the fall off to show you here. See the scale. So you've got the scale of the overall fall off and you can take it beyond 100%. And you've also got the fall off itself in the middle here. So this is at what point it's going to reach its absolute peak strength. If you've got this quite small, you want to make sure that it is right where the null is or the end point at which you're going to be triggering it. So see here, really need to make sure it's right there. And our null, in fact, could do be moved. Let's just move this null. Just roughly put in position here. As long as the null is in the center of here, then our bicep bolt is going to be 100%. Now you can see it, it's been applied. If you want to just check, you can see here that the, the morph has actually been applied 100%. But also notice that when the arm is actually rotating, when we're talking about the bicep here, which is set as our root, which is our global matrix, this is basically going to determine the position for our fall off so that no matter where this route is moved to, the fall off is going to be moving with it. And for us, this is a very, very good thing, as you can see there. So it doesn't matter where our character is in, in our 3D scene. It doesn't matter where our particular limb is in the 3D scene. Wherever its position is, the fall off is always going to be in the relative position in the global matrix of here. So that it means that if we were to apply the bicep bulge again after the arm was actually being rotated on a different axis, you can see here that we rotated on the y axis the bicep there and the fall off has followed it. So this means that if we wanted to animate our forearm again to come back up. That's to say at the very end here. If it's within this area, it's going to apply its full bulge again. Let's just put a keyframe. We'll play this back. And let's just add a few more keyframes, say 130. And then just to re really exaggerate the upper movement on the, the bicep here, it moves slightly to there. Let's move this right over. Then that, rotate it like that. can clearly see why it's important that in the global matrix we set the right joint or the null. So let's play this back and you'll see it.
And in a similar setup on another scene, what I've done is I've actually created a second morph. And, I've, and with the second morph, exactly the same setup, I've placed another one of these fall-offs to be in the position in which the arm is fully down. And then this is going to be going off our tricep morph. So let's just go to this scene. And you'll see this in action as you did in the beginning. And what we'll do is I'm just going to go and open up the espresso so you can see this. So this one here, this is going to be our root knoll in this particular case, our bicep. This and this one here is to do with a bicep. And this one here with this fall off is to do with the tricep. If I was to select these and make them visible, you'll see them. Make them visible, you'll see two in space. This one here is controlling the bicep strength, and this one's controlling the tricep strength. Two separate morphs. And now, when I apply, uh, I'll play this back, you'll see that whenever the end null, in this particular case, it's called a contact null, contact null, whenever it enters in specific positions in 3D space, it's going to trigger off different morphs. Bicep, tricep, bicep, tricep. So hopefully you've been able to learn something from this that you can apply both um, joint controlled morphs and also positional control controlled morphs. I would advise that you would, if you want something simple, just simple rotational controlled morphs, joint controlled morphs that is, that is ideal for things like um, to simple rotation of joints where you just got the bicep curl like that. If you've got more sophisticated type of um, morphs that you want to apply, use the positional controlled morphs, especially for areas like a shoulder. You can imagine that our end point in this particular case, this control um, null, is the point that's positioned right at the tip of the shoulder. And according to where the shoulder is in 3D space, not where the joint is rotated, but where this position of the shoulder is, is according to the deformation that's going to be applied to the shoulder. This is going to be particularly useful for if you've got the upper arm bone or sometimes called the bicep bone. It's rotating up and you're going to have a quite a drastic change between the shoulder um, deformation and if you move this forwards by rotations, it would mean that it's, it's going to basically not apply that morph anymore because you've just changed the rotational order. Whereas if you're using positional type morphs, then this does not have the problem because you can just move the fall off to be exactly where you want. And you can even mix them between one morph and another. So it merges between one and another. If you have any questions about this, then I'll be happy to answer as um, the best that I can. Um, and if you want a sample scene, then um, I can also post this up as well. So I hope this helps anyway. Um, and again, as always, thanks for watching and uh, bye for now.